All right. So today is Organic Friday, and we are talking about esters. These are a very important class of organic molecules. All right. Esters. All right. I wanted to start by talking about the esterification <coughs> reaction. And this is an important organic reaction that you need to know. All right. The basic pattern for an esterification reaction. You start with a carboxylic acid. We talked about those last week. Do you guys remember what the functional group is in carboxylic acids? Is it R, C, O, H? Yep. All right. So we start with a carboxylic acid and we're going to react it with an alcohol. All right. Where the carbon containing groups in the in the two molecules may or may not be the same. All right. And we're going to get an ester group and a water as well. All right, so let me show you the pattern. But these show up frequently on the, the reactions question. So this is a pattern you'll want to know. Right. So the basic pattern, you take an alcohol, all right. you take an organic acid or a carboxylic acid, you're going to get an ester. So I guess the next thing I should do is show you what the ester linkage looks like. Right, the ester functional group. But basically what we're going to do is take these guys out, take one hydrogen from the alcohol, take an OH from the carboxylic acid, and we're going to put everything together. But you need to know the basic pattern. Right. We'll form an ester. So here's what esters look like. All right, the general formula. We have some carbon-containing group R, we have the COO linkage here, and we have R prime. Now, the way it ends up working, this portion of the molecule is from the alcohol. And this portion of the molecule, including the C that's double bonded to the O, came from the carboxylic acid. So part of it's from the alcohol, part of it's from the ester, and we have the COO linkage in the middle. Sound good? Do you guys recognize this pattern? All right. Now, it's actually fairly easy to name esters. All right. I did want to point out before I go on and tell you how to name them that a lot of esters have fruity odors. So any t a lot of times if you're reading through the ingredient list on some food you've bought and it says artificial flavorings, a lot of those are esters. You can have esters that smell like and taste like spearmint, peppermint, wintergreen, those are all esters. Banana flavoring, peach flavoring, strawberry flavoring, they're all esters. So there's lots of different esters that can be made synthetically um, <coughs> that have these different flavorings and these are the same molecules that are giving rise to those tastes in nature as well, just prepared synthetically. Um, so they're very important. All right. We will do an ester's lab, probably after the AP exam is when we'll have time to do that. So we'll actually make some of these. Most of them are really fun. All right. So here's what we're going to do. If we think about our ester group. All right. We're going to take the alcohol part of the name. We're going to count carbons in the alcohol part of the molecule. All right? And what, however many carbons it is, we'll pull out the correct name for that alkane chain. All right? And put a YL ending on the end. All right? So methyl, propyl, butyl, whatever you need. So you put a YL ending on the alcohol part. And then on the carboxylic acid part, we'll do something different and we'll put it all together. Okay. Can I go on and show you that? For the acid part, all right, for this part of the molecule, right, you're going to name, you're going to count all the carbons, including the carbon that's double bonded to the oxygen, right. and you find that prefix that goes with that and put O8 on the end. 
Oh, wait. So this is, I have ethyl ethanoate here. All right, so let's start. Ethyl is telling us how many carbons? Two. All right. So we have two carbons coming from the alcohol part. We can go right in all our hydrogens. And then ethanoate, how many carbons there? Two. All right, and that includes the carbon that's double bonded to the oxygen. All right, so this is ethyl ethanoate. Now, it's not always written so the alcohol part is on the left and the carboxylic acid is on the right. It can be in any sequence. That doesn't really matter. Right, so in this case, it's the same number of carbons on both sides. So that won't always be true. So we'll go on and do some examples. All right, let's do this first example. All right, let's start with the alcohol part. This is from the alcohol. How many carbons are there? One. One. All right, so that would be methyl. All right, and if we look at the acid part of the molecule, how many carbons? And so that would be F, so it'll go on, ethanoate. That's in no age. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's look at this next structure. The alcohol part, what will we name that? Methyl. Methanoid. Okay. And how many carbons in the other part, David? One. One. So it, this is methyl methanoate. Okay. One more to do. All right. Here's the alcohol part. How many carbons? Two. Two. So that is ethyl. And if we look at the the um, acid part, how many carbons? Three. Three. Propane. So that would be propane. So it's propanoate. So this is ethyl propanoate. Easy and fun. <laughs> 